This video shows how to configure the Hinkspix Pro version 1, 2, and 3 with X lights. In this particular video, we will be configuring the SPI outputs that are shown here at the bottom. Those are hooked up to this particular output port section, which is 33 through 48. This controller also does feature a long range board. See our additional videos on the specifics of long range at holidaycore.com forward slash long range. This video also does not configure the network settings. If you have additional questions about how to access the web interface or access the controller on your network, see our other videos. All right, now our controller is live here. We have it all running. It is not yet configured. And the first step we want to do is go ahead and come over to X lights. Now we don't have any controllers configured, but the first thing we want to do is go in and set up our props. You must set up the props or models in X lights first. These models must, absolutely must reflect the real physical world. So if you have a matrix as we have here, and this one has 16 strings, if you're using zigzag or you have a particular physical layout, you must configure those within the model first. If you have a mega tree, it needs to be configured with the proper number of strings and the proper number of pixels and in the order of which way it starts, either left to right or right to left. Or if you have a singing face or other type of prop, if it has multiple strings, you must define in this particular case, this has two strings, the first one being 1 through 150 and then the rest being 151 through 307. Now, once you have that, we can go ahead and go over to the controllers tab. Now, you may note that this says no controller, and at this point, there's no need to configure a controller as X lights will take care of all that for you. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the Hinkspix Pro. Now, I should caution that the long range is not being set up here, and long range does not appear in the controllers tab. Long range receivers are a child of a controller. Now, the Hinkspix Pro is Ethernet based, so we'll say Add Ethernet. This will create an empty one. And we'll go ahead and give it a name. And if you have a descriptive area, it's best to use that. For example, Front Left Yard. All right. And then you can give additional further descriptions. We can select the vendor. The vendor is going to be Hinkspix. And then you're going to choose either the 1 or 2 or the Pro version 3. The Pro version 3 has additional ports that are available and higher output counts per port. So be sure to select the appropriate option and that will ensure that when X lights is configuring your controller it will take into account any different limitations of each CPU. You can then leave all the other settings except for the IP address the same. The next thing you want to do is enter the IP address of your controller. Now this will typically be shown on the screen of the controller and you can see it listed right here as this one being 10101010 and that's the default address. Now we're also in the E131 mode and that means that we will be receiving data from X lights real time and we will be showing you the test mode for that. All right, let's go back to our X lights and configure the remainder of this. We'll go ahead and hit save and we're ready to configure this. Normally your light may turn green over here. It may or may not always turn green, indicating the controllers online. You can click the open button and this will bring up a web interface of the controller and allow you to see what's on there. So if you click open and it does not open a web interface, your controller is not accessible online. Now it is possible to configure X lights without a controller being accessible and update the configuration at a later point. All right. The next thing we want to do is click this visualize button and once we've selected the controller right here on visualize this will bring up a box and this is the configuration for this particular controller. You'll see it at the top here. It has the IP address and the name we gave it. All right. Uh, you can also hide models that are assigned to other controllers. You can also export this data by printing it once you've configured it. You can also change the box sizes so if your names of your uh, props are a little large you can change them to fit and also you can change the font size so if it doesn't look right go ahead and change that now the important thing to understand is what we're looking at here now because we have told this 
we have a version 1.2. That controller has 48 ports plus a serial port. So what are we looking at in the real world? Here we have 1 through 16. You can see that listed right there. 1 through 16. Then we have 17 through 32 and then 33 through 48. Each of these ribbon cables goes to a specific expansion board. And in this particular case, this ribbon cable here is the bottom most board right here, which is the SPI serial peripheral interface, which is often referred to as just the direct output. We have three wires. They are red, black, and yellow. Red being the power for the pixels, black being the ground, and the data being the yellow in this case. We will be testing the output of those devices. Now, if you've received a controller from Holiday Coro and it has been built for you, the controllers will have their outputs labeled as indicated. Now, you'll also see a serial port down here that is often referred to as the DMX port. That is located right here. See our other videos on configuring that particular output. This device is for using legacy devices such as fog machines or gobos or moving heads. All right. Now, in our particular case, we do have um, the outputs, as I mentioned, they are labeled. So you can see that we have like 35, 34, 33. And in our particular case, we will be testing today outputs 48. And those will be hooked to our pixel nodes. And then we will also be testing output 37, which has seed pixels. All right. So let's go ahead and go back in and configure those. Now, what we do is we take things from the right and drag them to the left. Now, we have items that are in between 33 and 48. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our mega tree and let's drag it over here to 33. Now, you'll also notice these are grouped in sections. This is very helpful. See how it has yellow, magenta, red, and green. Um, those indicate groupings of pixels. Uh, ports. So if you're using long range, that is helpful. Again, see our other videos for that. When we drop that in, what we have done is that the model is configured for 200 pixels on this mega tree. This is string one, string two, string three. And that mega tree STR one is our name that we put into the model. X lights is added in the number of pixels here. And you can see that it also shows up over on the left. When you have multiple strings tagged together, so for example, if we take this off, and let's say that we had a house outline and we're gonna put some of the pixels here. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and take that out of long range mode. And then we also had some pixels here. You'll see that we added 72 plus 50 for a total of 122. Xlikes is keeping track of the total number of pixels capable on this particular controller and will warn you if you're exceeding those amounts. So again, let's go back and we're going to put our pixels back on 33 through 48. And we'll also drag on a matrix. Now, even that doesn't cause us to exceed the pixel count of the controller for this particular controller, which is 680 pixels. The version 3 is 1,024 pixels. So we're well under this at 400 pixels. Now, this is purely a data limit, not a power limit. You'll see Xlights does provide some information talking about the power consumption, power draw, like 11 amps. That is separate from this. And these are purely just how many pixels can the data output handle. So let's go ahead and put our props back here. And let's go ahead and put our mega tree in here. So when we put our cursor over there, you can see that it says how many strings and the port number. And this is pretty obvious because it has output 33. All right, so everything looks good here. What we can do is go ahead and close this. Now, should you see anything in red, the pixel counts in red, or down here at the bottom, if there are any warning notices, you must resolve those before proceeding. That indicates that something is misconfigured. You've told x to configure something that is physically impossible for the controller to accomplish. All right, we can go ahead, make sure we've saved our configuration, and we're going to upload the output to the controller. What is happening is in the background, the controller is being sent data. And if we flip over to the controller, we can see that the controller is in the reboot process. Every time you make a configuration change to the controller, it is running under a new configuration and it needs to be rebooted to appear correct. 
Once the controller is fully booted, we can then go in and test it. Now we have an entire section of videos on just testing. You can test using the button interface, using the web interface of the controller, or X lights. Now here we can see that we've configured 19 universes. Uh, now that may also include additional pixels on other outputs. So let's go ahead and we're going to show you how to test. Now we do have an entire video that goes into extremely deep dive of the x -Lights test function. So see our test videos. We're going to go to tools test and we are going to use this uh, test function under models. Now do not ever test using a sequence. Your testing should always be performed using either the test mode built into the controller or x -Lights test to start with. Only when your props are working properly using the test mode in x -Lights do you proceed with doing any additional testing or sequencing with your controller. All right, now you'll notice that uh, when we clicked on this models tab, we have unavailable. And the reason it says unavailable is because this particular props are not mapped to anything. In other words, they do not have a home and x -Lights has no way to send data to them. And that is true. We have only configured the mega tree in this particular case. Now over to the side, we have to make sure that we have output to lights turned on. Normally we don't have this checked off. Don't send to data on used outputs. And what I generally suggest is using the RGB cycle option. And we're going to come over here and go to RGB cycle. ABC means red, green, blue typically, and all means white. And we're going to move this slider just over here close to the very edge. That's going to cause it to output uh, rapidly changing data, allowing us to see the data working. Now you'll notice down here in the bottom left, it says testing zero channels because we have not told it to test anything. So we're going to go up here to Megatree and turn on our Megatree test. We can see 9600 DMX channels worth of data are being output. Now, if I expand this, I can test individual nodes. Uh, you can see, of course, that we have a lot of nodes here. Uh, we also can do that if you are testing props such as singing faces. Um, if you have a singing face, you can expand those and see the submodels and test them. All right, so currently we're outputting 9600 channels. So what we're going to do is flip over to our web interface of our controller, and we can actually see this data on the status tab. I'm going to come over to the auto live update, and what that does is it tells x uh, the controller, tell us when you're receiving data on a specific universe. Now, x has hidden the universe and channels from you for some degree, um, but you can see that we are receiving data right here on Ethernet and we see the individual universes receiving data and that last number the zero indicates bad data you should never see a number in the last number that's greater than zero so this is a good sign so let's go ahead and take a look at what's actually happening here we can see that on our output 37 right here that is working we're going red green blue white red green blue white and also on our output 48, which is also on that mega tree, we are outputting to our pixel nodes, and those are red, green, blue, white. So at this point, we are working. You can see the status indicator showing that we do have data going to the controller. And at this point, your configuration is now functional and fully tested. And you can proceed on to sequencing. Again, if you are configuring other types of props, such as props that are configured with long range, you will need to configure those using our videos specific to your receiver, whether that's long range regular or long range smart. We also have a full complement of videos for configuring x lights for use with the tools Hinkspix export and playback functions. See those separately.